All right, welcome everyone to the very first Australian Watch Club podcast. Um, today we have here two very special guests from the world of YouTube. We have Jody from Just One More Watch. Good morning. And we have Al from the Watch Channel. Thank you. Hi guys. Who are you? Because you haven't said ah, who me. you are. You may be. All right, so my name is Sam. I look after the Australian Watch Club as well as the Australian Watch Insurance. So today we're going to talk about our holes from the recent AliExpress sale. Um, no thanks to Jody who got me into this yeah, whole. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's your whole problem. AliExpress. Yeah, bl thing. blame Jody. Yeah, why not? Why not? Um, so I think we've all got very different watches from what I've seen from Jody's preview into mm -hmm. what you wanted to get. Yeah. Um, Alan, I've spoken, so I kind of know what Al's got. Um, I think our tastes are very different in terms of what we like. Yeah, should be good. So I thought we'll um, display our holes and go through, you know, why we got these watches, okay. if we like them, our experiences and, and whatnot. Excellent. Sounds good. So why, why AliExpress? Why do we all buy watches, <laughs> lots of watches from AliExpress then? What's the, what's the draw? What's the appeal to you guys? For me personally, it's the uh, you know it's that element of uh, sorry the element of um, uh, variety and cost. Quite frankly, yeah, because you can you can you can choose a wide variety of watches that that you like from an aesthetic standpoint, but can afford them as well. It just gives you the ability to. For me, I think it's it's the ability to actually look at something without that expense and go, is this something I'd invest more money on with a, with a sorry, reputable brand is not the right word, but you know, with a well-known luxury brand. Yeah, luxury. I think luxury is the word, luxury. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Quite what that means. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, but yeah, no, luxury. Well, what for, I mean, for me, I mean, I've worked in the watch industry pretty much all my life, so I've been around luxury watches and I've become quite blasé about what each person pays for a watch and. It, it's funny because working in the industry doesn't mean you can afford the watches that you sell. Mm. And so with my finance being where it is, I thought, I still want to buy watches. I, I'm not the kind of person that just say, oh, I'll save up to buy one good watch. I'd rather use that same amount to buy lots of nice watches. Mm. Um, and after watching various YouTube channels, yep. um, I thought I'll take the plunge given that there's a sale on. And yeah. thought I'll, I'll give the go. It's not a, it's not a huge investment into Ooh. Is this your first time then? Is yeah. This, are you an AliExpress version? Yes. <laughs> oh, exactly. right. I'll be really interested to see what you bought and what you think of it, therefore. If, yeah, you're, if you're a first timer, Al and I are old hands. We've been around the block a few <laughs> yeah, times, yeah, yeah. With, a few times with Ali. Yeah. I started buying them a few years ago from Ali because you just can't get the specifications for the money elsewhere, mm. any anywhere from micro brands, from big brands, from any, but you, you have to go straight to the source. You know, the world is made in China. You may as well buy it direct, direct. Yeah. Plus, as, as you said, you can have a look at more expensive designs. I've got a couple in my bag today, my personal bag that I would never be able to afford the original watches. Uh, whereas I can spend a couple hundred dollars and get a taste of it uh, for mm. yeah a lot less money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the way Seiko sort of um, increased their prices over the past few years, mm -hmm. that was my go-to brand originally. Because you could, you know, with the Sumo or those, what was 500 bucks back then is now 850, 900, or even 1200. Yeah. And that's that's what sort of pushed me down AliExpress, was like you say, you know, the, the specs that you get there for 150 to 200 bucks, you're paying five, six, 700 easy in another yeah, brand. Definitely. All right, so should we get into the watches? Yeah, well, Absolutely. are we doing the wristwatch checks today? What have we got? Yeah, what have we got on? All right, so I will start. So <laughs> as a comparison, I've brought my trusty Zenith, uh, this is the A384. And I'm guessing this wasn't from AliExpress. No, no I, I, okay. And I gotta say sorry, Sam, when I saw it on your wrist, I thought it was the, an AliExpress <laughs> version. I had, to, I had to backtrack when you told me it was actually a Zenith. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful watch. So this is um, this is back when I was working at Zenith. So I one of the watches when they first released one, I I just knew I had to get it. It is a beautiful yeah, watch. It's gorgeous, and it's such a nice size as well. It makes you realise how big some watches actually yeah. are, yeah. and they don't need to unnecessarily be. Unnecessarily big. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's what's on my wrist today. Uh, next up, I'll go next. Um, so this is my second most recent acquisition, and this was from the. Um, 
uh, AliExpress anniversary sale, and it's the San Martin SN008, I think is the Ooh, reference. You remember, the oh, you remember San Martin references? You're doing, you're I, doing I, I, well. I have yeah, no yeah. idea. I lost so, track years ago. So, I, and you know what? I've never really been a fan of the Black Bay 58, which this is a, a homage to, mm. but that bezel, the way it glints, and the, the pure sh sort of blinginess of it really attracted me. Yes. Um, and again, not to, to reference you as the enabler. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to spend was, this entire, I know, entire just, experience just apologising. Just copying oh, you. Yeah, sorry about that. But it was, no, you know, I think my price point has always been around the 200 mark. This was a little bit more than that. And I was keen to see what the variation in quality was. So that's my, uh, my most recent haul. Okay, very nice. Uh, I what came with happen? two today, both kind of classics. That is the Steel Dive Willard, their 1970, which is obviously a Seiko 6105 homage. These are everywhere and they just get cheaper every year. They're amazing, you know, stainless sapphire Seiko movement. I think I paid $115 for my most recent one of these, which is just, that's, that's Australian dollars, by the way. Yeah, yeah, not US. Um, plus this Boltony, I got that one last November in the last big sale. Just love the thing, you know, military style, chronograph a bit of the dirty dozen look um again that one was 150 us this time i'll talk in us dollars but right. just a really good looking watch i think it's a hamilton design not sure where how original it is but Ooh. yeah really great looking watch for the that's for the money i paid for it. yeah yeah mm. and the crystal was amazing on that one is that the original strap or is that no a... they're both on barton okay. silicones i find them super comfortable mm. 20, nice. 20 us each or so but yeah that's a Forever strap, it just fits the watch really nicely. Mm, lovely. All right, speaking of Hamilton Ooh, designs. Right, nice homages. segue. All right. We're in. Um, well, I wasn't sure what this was a, an homage to, but it wasn't an obvious homage. Okay. And this is something I'm, I'm a bit undecided about how I feel about homage watches. So I don't like the one, well, not quite into the whole sort of obvious homages, but this one was, I think it was, um, Obscure enough, so it's a um, it's a W10 homage. So I believe Hamilton's currently doing one of these, and there's a few other brands, smaller micro brands, that yep. are doing these homages. Um, this one runs an in-house movement. It's the Fanzi something or I did my research last night, I've forgotten them completely. Okay. Yes. Um, but I believe it was based on the original um, Chinese movement. There's a common watch movement. Oh, the seagull. Uh, something. So it's, is it manual wind? It's manual wind. So it's based on that. Okay. Uh, who who makes this one? So what brand is it? Uh, Merker. Okay, right. Or Mercure. They, or... They're really interesting. Yeah. But their marketing is appalling. They don't know how to sell a watch. They know how to make a watch, but they don't know how to sell a watch. So. But I really like this. Um, I like this. I like the style. I like the fact that it's a stereo dial. Um, and this is one of the only ones I've actually kept the time on. Mm -hmm. Just to see how how good uh, yeah. Chinese movement can be, and it's running plus three a day. Yeah, wow, that's pretty good. Now, how much was that one? I think this is one eighty. One eighty US. Um, Aussie. Aussie. And is that the original strap? No. Okay. Um, You've I, I very rarely keep them on original straps. Okay. Well, oh, that is pretty. May I look at the yeah. back? Can you see the movement? No. Close no. case back. I'm very happy with it. The um, the finishing is fantastic. Yeah. No, these are quite common. That little case, slightly kind of. Tonald case, mm. very pretty. Yeah, I've not seen that brand before. That's beautiful. Yeah, so they do. Um, they do have quite a few sub brands as well. Okay. Um, mostly military inspired retros, so to speak. But yeah, very, um, very well priced. How's the loom on it? Loom's okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm not fussed about loom. Like I like it when it's really bright, but yeah. I'm not like it's not a deal breaker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't have to have loom. Yeah, so I'm I'm very happy with that one. Johnny, what do you have? Um, well, what did I get? I got a steel dive, so I came with a steel dive on my wrist, and I bought one more steel dive myself. But I'm not. I don't know. This one was a bit meh. I wasn't convinced by it. I'll stick it under the camera. You can see what you think yourself. It's from their. What do they call it? A steel flyer. So they're acknowledging that it isn't a dive watch, which is a good thing. As is I said, the marketing's the, not always right. That VH31? Yes, it's okay. got a Seiko VH31, which is a, a kind of mecha quartz three-hander. So four ticks per second, two, mm. two and a half year battery life, and plus or minus 15 seconds a month. So you get the accuracy of a quartz, but with the looks of a mechanical. Yeah. 
which was part of the appeal. I've had a couple of these watches, the VH31s in the past, and enjoyed them, but this one, mm, I don't know. The, the dial wasn't quite what I was hoping for. It looks a bit cheesy. Right. The hands don't seem to be the right color for some reason. Is that me. right? They're white, they should be black maybe. Or they don't, do they match the numbers? Is that, well, they match numbers. Yeah, it just... No, no, something's not right there. I, I wasn't convinced by that one. I unboxed it and I haven't worn it since the unboxing. I'll be honest, mind you, I did buy so many watches. Not all <laughs> of them get the love that they deserve, unfortunately, do, but... Do you guys know that VH31 movement? Is there any brand out there that is not on AliExpress that uses that movement? Because I'm not aware of... I mean, I, I'd never heard of that movement until I saw those watches on AliExpress. Yeah, I think some, you know, micro brands okay. use them. Uh, the Trafford, I reviewed a Trafford Crossroads which is again is another kind of uh, square case watch and he's doing a choice of SW200 or VH31 at a reduced price. I would love to I, I would love to see more of those. Mm. But people are biased against quartz. People <laughs> don't like quartz. You say quartz, ah, I switched off as soon as you said quartz, but not before I left this angry comment about <laughs> yeah, the fact that yeah, it's yeah, a quartz. Yeah. The, the, the funny thing about that is is because uh, I I went down the, the quartz rabbit hole um, with Grand Seiko. Mm. And mm. it's the know, best I, best oh, one to go to, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And the Chrono Master. That was my first yeah. quartz. Ah, I citizen. need to have one of those. Yeah. I haven't got I've still not got one. Yeah. You not, so, you not today. I had oh. I've only got two arms. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't um, wear a third watch. But but yeah I, I get a lot of hate like, oh it's a quartz, it's crap. I, I think for, for me all of the guys back in the day that were making watches those from those famous brands, they would use that technology of that hand because it was there to increase the accuracy of timekeeping. Mm. And that's so the point, a, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a legitimate um, uh, component of, of, of time. We are, we are all mad uh, going for these old yeah, yeah, yeah. ancient <laughs> technologies, <laughs> but you know, we do it. We but do it, it anyway. you know, for, for me, it was like, look, it is, it's hand assembled, it's, it's handcrafted, it gives you that accuracy, and quite mm. frankly, it doesn't give you any of the servicing issues, which is a completely separate topic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, that's that's watch number one. Bit meh. I don't know. It wasn't expensive. It was 100 US or just under 100 US. You know, you get plenty of specs for the money. Uh, stainless sapphire, all the rest of it, decent strap, but it just didn't um, fill me with joy when I opened the box. Yeah. All right. So there we are. Fair enough. A right. maybe. All right, so this is uh, another recent edition. Yeah, I think we should show Ooh, the box show first. The box. Ooh. Wow. A Pagani Deluxe. We're in a, we're in a library, by yeah. the way, so it looks like a library. Yeah, it does, it looks it like does, a it giant, does, it a weighty tome on the table. Unfortunately, the warranty manual instruction booklet doesn't look like a book. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so I got this. This arrived last week, and typically what I go for on the um, the channel is is what I actually like, which is dive watches, sports related. Yeah. Mm. So this was somewhat of a slight deviation, and it was. We'll move this out of the way. The Oyster Perpetual Ooh, okay. wow. um, uh, homage. So Seiko NH35, hmm? Sapphire Crystal, all the usual specs that you get. Rolex style bracelet, mm -hmm. unfortunately no glide lock. But it does have screwed links, solid end links. Loom is actually a little better than what Pagani traditionally produce. But uh, I think it would be 110, 120, wow. including delivery. Yeah. And again, eight days from China to, to here. And uh, it, it just compounds that mm. fascination with AliExpress, yeah. just what you get. In, and, and you know, the first time, this is what I'm really interested to know from you, Sam, is the first time it, something arrived from AliExpress for me, I was like, I am gonna open up dog shit here. Right? <laughs> and this is what's gonna happen. Yeah. And I was absolutely gobsmacked to the point that, you know, for a week I was there, mm. is this real? Yeah. Have yeah. I just been lucky? Do you know what, their stuff has got a lot better. You know, you can't generalize, but the quality, even Pagani's, you know, I've been reviewing Pagani's for maybe four, four and a half years. Mm -hmm. And the quality, I think they're all forcing each other to get better. Yeah. Um, it was kind of slim pickings for stuff with sapphire and stainless steel, but now that's got screw link bracelet, stainless steel screw link bracelet, adjustable clasp, sapphire crystal, and it costs $120 as opposed to eight, eight and a half for a, for a Rolex. So you find that it's been the last couple of years that the quality has gotten a lot better? Yeah, I, I definitely think, you know, they're really pushing 
the, the envelope of what you can get for the money and how nice it actually is. Do you mm. think that's just down to manufacturing technology? Or I, think is that... I think they're selling more and people are buying more and they're, they're buying slightly better stuff than maybe they, they did a few years ago. Do you think the economy's made any sort of difference to how people are now looking at buying watches and, and, and I suppose the proliferation and, and uptake of sales on, on Polaris or those brands from AliExpress? Mm, I don't know, people, I mean, how many watches do you need? One. So, <laughs> you well, I agree, yeah, yeah, it gets a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Anything over one is a bit of a luxury item in the first place, so I don't yeah. know. But maybe, maybe people are looking at, at lower price points than they were a few mm. years ago. We need to do some sort of survey. How many people has Jody enabled? Sorry, be, again, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that would be you know, four. I'm not keeping <laughs> keep count myself, sorry. The small GDP of a But nation. why do they put a date complication on a watch, on a copy of a watch that doesn't have a date complication? I know, and you know, that's the most frustrating part is, is that there are just, they're so close. Yeah. But, but, but not. Yeah. You and know. I don't know whether that's intentional. Are they doing that for V3? Or V3? You've got the photocopier mm. out. Why didn't you... you, yeah. you, you Set it up 100%. Didn't you, yeah, follow the photocopier? Yeah. So, I mean, that's, again, talking about this, this, the biggest frustration I have with this is it's got the NX35, so it's got a date window under there. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's got a date, a date yeah. um, uh, dial, but you can't see it. Mm. Um, and Pagani, I had the Doxa... Uh, homage the orange dial and that uses I think the NH38 which doesn't have mm. the date complications mm. so it's just pull it out adjust the time it's things like that it's like yeah. oh, nice a little bit of yeah frustrating but is what it is yeah all right what's so, next well you were talking about my um well my version purchase from AliExpress yeah. so this was um oh well, I went with something to say so it's the <laughs> steel dive uh, well, it goes on the watches. The Steel Dive 1970. It's the 1970, yeah. On the bracelet. Um, Stereo dial again, just because I really did not like their logo. I thought it was just way too big uh -huh. for dial. Um, but yeah, so my initial impression of that was just, I was gobsmacked. It yeah. was, oh, it was fantastic. And I remember, I think yeah, I was yeah, telling yeah, you, I was yeah, like, message oh, me. I was, so look what I got. I, I could not believe how well made that watch is. Um, the loom is fantastic. It's two different color looms too. The the bezel loom was blue, yep. and the rest of it was green. So it actually has a really nice sort of two color scheme mm -hmm. uh, when it lights up. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is that the clasp is a little bit. It's not as smooth as it could be. Like it's it takes a bit of an effort to really close it. Yeah. But apart from that, I mean. I can't, I, I can't fault it and Seiko movement so NH35 in that one I was just you may as well put all three on the table yeah I mean there we are <laughs> we're all fiddling with them there it, we go. it's a bit of a classic you, you kind of have to if you're into AliExpress watches mm. you really have to have one of these you because do. you do I remember I reviewed a German watch brand selling one of those Willards for 299 US dollars you know, five six years ago and I was like hey that's a great watch it's mm. well spent it's got all of the gear in it and then I was like, oh, hang on, somebody's doing one for 200. Oh, hang on, somebody's doing one for 150. And now they're everywhere, all coming out the same factory, no yeah. doubt, with different brand names on the dial or no brand names on the dial, but just incredible. I think people have a slightly different attitude towards a blatant copy of an old design than they do to a blatant copy of a current catalog watch. I think people are prepared to uh, give these a bit more leeway because you know you can't buy the Willard. I mean, Seiko relaunched the Willard a couple of years ago. Yeah. I appreciate it, but you want an original Willard? You're looking at five, six thousand US. Mm. If if you want that, and it's an old vintage watch. And you know what the funny thing is? Is the manufacturing standard of that watch is far oh, below the manufacturing far standard. Far really? Right. Really? Oh yeah, 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 right. Absolutely, yeah. For a hundred bucks. Yeah. Mm. If you get it at the right time. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, and I'm very happy with the bracelet because the one one point I have about Seiko is the quality of the bracelet isn't really up to the price they're charging. And the bracelet on this one is much better than... And I do have Seiko, so I feel comfortable in saying that the Seiko bracelets yeah. aren't, aren't good. Yeah. So, Alistair, is that your... Did you buy that one in this sale that, as that well? Was, that was my first time. 
as a result of watching one of your videos. Sorry, <laughs> I have to. That's have apology five. Again, there you go. Is that yeah. five? Or That's five, five, five apologies. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that. Okay. But no, I, um, I, yeah, I saw it on your channel. I was like, this is ludicrous. Like the loom yeah. on it. And, and for me, I'm a big. Like, I love loom on a watch. Yeah. The one thing you know, with, with a lot of Paganis, that loom is just dire. This, I couldn't believe it. So I had to look at it. And, and again, just waking up in silly hours of the night, going, this is amazing. It still works. It, well, first of all, yeah, it works. And secondly, the loom on it is fantastic. And all of the watches that I've got have been in the sea and okay. used like they've yep. all been right. tested. Yeah. Uh, not down to 20 meters, because if I know what time it is there, it's time to die if I'm down 20 meters. Yep. <laughs> um, but quite frankly, regular seawater, swimming in the pool, um, okay, in the they're shower, they're all okay. I should say they're all right. far better made than than most far more expensive watches were mm, absolutely. even 20 years ago. Absolutely. So yeah, I think we can just stop here. Uh, if you're interested in AliExpress at all, buy a Steel Dive 1970. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah, make, make it your first watch. Have a good look mm. at it. Uh, but you'll struggle to get something as good as this thereafter. They're just they're, they're fantastic quality. Yeah, that's that's very really true. really nicely done and dirt cheap on it, especially it, in a sale. It's probably the worst watch to dive into. On yeah, Express. okay, maybe it's the worst one because it's all because downhill it, from this. Well, you, exactly. Yeah, you set a set a yeah. precedent, don't you? Really? Yeah, and you get addicted to it because you, that's your first watch and the quality is so good yeah. that you want to oh, sort of yeah. try more. Yeah, and and the more you browse, that the more that yeah. the the algorithm suggests watches for you and down and you go there's there always go. different you go. that comes and up you go on to his channel and yeah, sorry you know, number six, six. Sorry. Six. okay uh, but no I, you know seriously i think you're, you're right there is an element or an argument for, for both it's either going to be the, the the first best watch you ever get from aliexpress or it's the one you, you lead up to to leave you with the uh, you know that final victory but we all know you're always still going to go back and buy, buy another one anyway one. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course Oh, that's interesting. We all brought those today. That's yeah. that's fair. Yeah, that, that says, that says a, lot. a lot. It does it say does. a lot, doesn't it? It yeah. says a lot. All right, who's next? Um, I've just done that one. Okay, that's you, Joe. Is it me? Right. What's next? I've got. Uh, all right. Let's, let's do. Since you did a Pagani, I'm going to do a Pagani. And that's a very different box. It's a very different box. Well, Al paid for the expensive box. I'm too tight to pay right. for the expensive okay. box. So did you have to pay for the Yeah, extra? there is a difference in yeah. price. Okay. Is it like 15, 20 bucks, something like that? Oh uh, yeah, some, something like that. Whereas I always uh, pick the cheap box. Uh, this, this is brand new. I'm opening it live. Ooh. I haven't even opened it live. Oh, is this one? This okay. is it. Ah. I've got two that I haven't even opened. Awful Bond NATO, no I, thanks. You get that with every one, don't you? Blue polishing cloth, I love these. My house is covered in them. And this is, it should be, one of their ah. Patek Philippe lookalikes. Now these are kind of increasingly popular. Uh, Furlan Mari, who are a, well, in inverted commas, micro brand, redid one of these. I think it's a one four six one reference Patek from the 50s, a 1463, and everybody started buying them a couple of years ago, mm. and so all of the Chinese manufacturers jumped on and thought, oh, well, there's a market for vintage look-alike uh, Pateks. So this has a Mecha Quartz, I think it will be the VK64 Seiko Mecha Quartz movement in it. I think it was 110 or something. Mesh strap, again, no battery required, decent level of water resistance, and a pretty looking watch. There we are, first time I've seen it, and it looks, it looks good. Nice. And like I said, I think people are more open to a copy of a watch that you can't possibly, you know, it's, it's, it's unobtainable in the current market. You know, they're tens of thousands of dollars and they haven't been making them for 60, 70 years. It's kind of all right. It's not the same as wearing a Submariner lookalike with a different brand name on the dial. Yeah. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think most people would be um, more understanding of, of this style of of copy. So yeah, another, th there's plenty of these in AliExpress. The yeah. Seiko use VK ball, the Mecha Quartz in their own watches? They do, they do. Yeah, not often though. I think they, they sell yeah. more than they, than they use for themselves. Yeah. I had a, um, an SSB, which was a, um, obviously a chrono from, from Seiko. Was, the strap on it was dire. Mm. Um, but it was I think maybe 250, 260, something like that. And it had the VK movement and it was fantastic. It's just, it goes back to, for me, it's that reliability thing. Yeah. You just go, you know, you don't need to worry about it. At worst, if it breaks, it breaks. It's 200 bucks to replace it. 
I think we're all at the, the stage mm. in our watch collecting journeys that we have a number of watches. How many watches do you want to set every time before you put them on? Yeah. You know, and, and as you said earlier on, how many watches do you want to service? Mm. Because they're all kind of expensive time bombs yeah. ticking away in our boxes. And these ones simply aren't, you know, dollar battery, do it yourself every couple of years and it'll, it'll run merrily away. Mm. I think, you know, again, looking at that service component, even if you, you uh, I don't know how many people actually factor in what you're going to be spending on yeah. service and actually how long it's going to take. I went to the Amiga boutique um, at Bondi probably about a month or two ago and they said it's sitting at about nine months at the wow. moment. For a service? A for service? You're joking. Wow. And, and again, you know, the other thing is you want to take it to a third party, like a watchmaker. Yeah. Do I, you know, just, just as long. Yeah. And quite frankly, probably not to the same standard that Amiga will, will do it to. I don't know. I mean, that's my, my perception. But you're just stuck. And the cost is, you know, it's, it's, it's like uh, uh, charging for, uh, you know, trading services. You know, it's like there's a demand there, so you can charge whatever you want, really. Mm -hmm. I don't think people factor in how much that's actually going to set them back when they buy those watches. That's um, true. And I think servicing is not something that's usually talked about when. And that's no. the point of purchase. No. no, certainly not when people want you to buy their watches. Yeah. They're not, they're not. Did you ever talk about it when you were selling people's Did you? Yeah. No. Did you actually? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I was trained properly. So I was oh, trained I to, see, I see. To talk about servicing, like, you know, every 35 years you do need to have your watch serviced. Um, but, you know, the official line and what I actually do personally, it is mm. quite different. Yeah. If you're wearing it every day, I guess you have to yeah. service it every three to five years. So. Is that kind and of if you're rotating, rotating it through boxes and boxes, boxes yeah, and yeah. boxes, watches, then what do you actually? How often do you actually have to service them? Yeah. So there we are. That was my next one, Pagani, Patek style. Yeah, it's all right actually. It's maybe a it's little, really nice. a little tubby, but that's okay. I'll get rid of the mesh. I'll mm. put that on a piece of, you know, nice brown leather or something, and that'll be another one for the box that I don't have to set when I want to wear it. It's nice to see it in the flesh because when you look at it on the the site, oh, how, yeah. how real does it <laughs> yeah. look? And that was actually the purpose of my, like, why I'd actually set the channel up, because I had ordered watches um, online, not from AliExpress, but from watch retailers using stock materials and getting it. And this is nothing like what it looks right. like. Um, so that was the purpose of doing the, the channel, was just to show people what watches look like in real life. Mm. So it's, you know, like I say, AliExpress is a, is a lot better now because I think they, they do tend to use either videos that they've taken off YouTube or they've got some professional um, footage in there that makes it, it look at least a little bit like what you're going to be getting. Yeah. I know some of the stores, they, they actually use the video of a person filming the yeah. actual oh, product yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, flipping yeah. it through and I've, I've got, I've got the, uh, copyright yeah. violations yeah. left, right and centre oh, from little people using your videos. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> Which I, you know, I, again, I don't know why they're doing that because that's not going to help sell them. but. Um, uh, yeah, you know, they'll, they'll use whatever footage they can get and, and, you know, I suppose in some respects it's a compliment, but at least it shows what those watches look mm. like in real life. Mm. Well, I just checked, 200 metres of claimed water resistance. Yes. <laughs> for a chrono, I mean, yeah, that, for her, that, that would be a miracle, frankly. How uh, fine, because you do have a, a pressure tester. I do have you? a pressure tester, which I, I, I gloriously misused for a video. And I actually, I managed, to, I managed to blow one watch up, which was kind of, which was kind of the point of the video. So it, it did have a purpose, but yeah, only uh, six bar, 60 metres. Okay. So I can properly pressure test. They, they cost about a grand 1500 Aussie for a, um, for a proper, for a proper mm. pressure testing rig. But there are channels out there, that YouTube channels that do it, that kind of beyond the press, where they're blowing stuff up and cracking, cracking crystals. Oh. A lot of fun to watch once or twice. <laughs> I know, as long as it's not your watch, they're doing it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think, um, again, you know, my first real watch was a Seamaster GMT from back in the Brosnan Bond days. Nice. Mm. I like the blue one, Yeah. but every recruitment consultant out there was wearing them. <laughs> Sorry to anybody. Who <laughs> no, no, no disparity. Um, yeah. That's your I'll first watch, apology yeah, there. Yeah, to, yeah, no, to there the recruitment Number one for me, you're about yeah. 63. Um, and uh, uh, so I wanted something slightly different. And that had 300 meters of water resistance. And more to the point, it didn't have that bloody helium. Did you like yeah, helium? Yeah, yeah, the wart. Oh, really? Um, the only interaction <laughs> I have with helium was when I was inhaling it from a balloon with the kids trying it's to find it. Yeah. Um, so. So that watch, 300 meters water resistance, and again, it's like it's so much 
water resistance over and above mm. what you need. Mm. Um, and like I say, you know, all of these watches that we've got for everyday application, they're absolutely fine. Yeah. By and large, you're going to get a couple that are, you know, aren't right. But you know, if you take them in a bath or put them in red hot water, then you're going to have problems. But yeah. it's it's by the by, you know, you, you're getting something that's waterproof. Mm. Yeah, my six bar tester, I think all bar one watches pass the test. And if it can do 50 meters of water resistance, which is swimming, uh, you know, vigorous swimming, yes. it's fine. That's, that's completely fine for, you know, for the vast majority of people. So. I did happen to see, this was a couple of years ago, a guy at um, Cook and Philip Pool, which is a swimming pool in, in Sydney. And it was a guy who was in the um, Therapeutic pool, I think they call it, and he got a speedy on under the water. Oh, and I couldn't help myself. I was like, mate, please take it off. And he's like, no, it's fine, it'll be fine. I'm like, please just lift up out of the water. I want to hold his wrist out of the water for him. You know, but uh, yeah. Anyway. yeah. Right. Strangely enough, though, actually, uh, I don't know where I edit this out, but going into, the, into this library, I saw a guy dead set and must have been 15 years old wearing a white gold blue sub. Ooh. That's the eastern suburbs. I, well, yeah. I, I, I was yeah. tempted to do as a knockoff, uh, um, but I, um, maybe it, prob it probably isn't. Yeah. Um, I was I want to take the photo just to show you. Guys. Yeah. Like, this is this is where we are. <laughs> We're in is, rural Ara, um, so yeah, so, that's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. The, the librarians all have white gold subs. These are white Cartiers. So, yeah. what's your next watch, Al? Okay, my next one. Oh, I'm going to go down the rabbit hole here, and it is. Unashamedly a homage. Okay. And it is. Oh, there we go. It is the Explorer 2 homage mm. from Pagani. Now I've had a couple of these. Yeah. So I'll put it up there for you to, to see. Oh, just leave it like that. Oh. Um, so the first one that I had was the V1, was it with the Pearl DG movement? Yeah. Uh, slightly larger at 42 mils. That is 40 mils, I think. Oh, 41, um, but relatively smaller than the original. But it has the Seiko uh, GMT movement, so the NH34, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, the loom on it is a hell of a lot better than the original, and it just fits a lot better. Uh, I found that the original version, when I put it on my wrist anyway, it, it just looked too large. So that's a little bit more um, in line with what the Rolex version looks like. And according to whatever he's saying about the NH34, it's going to be a much more reliable movement. Yeah, 100%. The one thing I would say, though, is uh, the comments that I get on my channel, and I think we talked about this before we started, is people whinging about the fact that they've got a dodgy one or this and that. People really need to take that into perspective. Like, you're going to get some watches that are faulty on, on or dead on arrival. Mm -hmm. Personally speaking, I've had 30, 40 watches, and they've all been fine. Right. And the way in which I wear them in rotation, I've never had any issues with any Chinese made movement um, or the accuracy because, again, from wearing it for one or two days and it's losing four or five seconds a day. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Really doesn't no, matter. Then you put not, it back in the box yeah, and pick something else. My life's not that accurate yeah, yeah, and organised. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the latest one. Ooh, the loom on it is a hell of a lot better, though, I must May say. I have a yeah, look of course, at this absolutely. Go for because life. you know that the. Um, the Rolex, the 42mm Rolex, wears really awkwardly. Does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So the original Mark 1s were very true to the Rolex, whereas this, yeah, that is kind of 40. Um, yeah. That wears more like one of the older, 40mm. Yeah. And again, you know, even at full price for that, which I think is about 180, something like yeah. that, yeah. you're just getting so much watch. You definitely mm. are. I mean, again, you look at the, the NH34, which is the 4R34, which Seiko use in their um, SKX GMTs yep. that are out. You know, that's, uh, I was looking on Starbuy, actually. Yeah. And those watches are 700, something like that, I think. That's probably a median sort of price. Yeah. Again, 180. You're taking 500 yeah. bucks plus straight away. And this one has Sapphire, whereas the SSKs have hard legs. Yeah. I did a head to head between the 42mm Pagani and the 42mm Polar Dial Explorer. Mr. X had one, he still, does, he still does have one of those. And some of the macro shots of the bezels, there is not really much to pick yeah. between them, yeah. Yeah, obviously, it's a, you know, nil point for originality. No, no. But then, you know, I can't off the top of my head. Um, state the references, but there's homaging going on between luxury brands as oh, well. Oh, for sure, yeah. But I mean, 
I mean, with homage, there's, there's big Swiss brands doing that as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it, for me, you know, the 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 argument is, it's not just with budget end watches. There is there is copying to some level or extent mm. across um, luxury brands as well. So it happens at all price points. Mm. Um, again, you know, you, you, I suppose if you if you don't like homages, you don't like them. Yeah, but yeah. If it's if it's something that if you want the look and you want it at a reasonable price point, then I don't see anything wrong with it at all. No. I certainly, and I'm, I, I will say, going down the avenue of getting a replica for review on the channel, putting that on, and going, God, it looks like it, but it isn't. Mm. It's a very different. Um, experience when you put a homage on because you know that it's not what it's pretending to be. Mm -hmm. It just looks like it, so it doesn't give you that nasty aftertaste. Yeah. If that makes sense, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's not. You're not. It's not a lie. You're not. No. You're not. Mm. You know. No. It's it's a it's a copy. It's a blatant design copy, but it's not trying to convince anybody else that it actually is yeah. a Rolex yeah. because it says Pagani design yeah. on the dial. Yeah. So no, that's interesting. That's yeah. I hadn't seen one of the slightly smaller ones. Definitely that's, more that's, wearable that's for the, most yeah. people, female end links as well. Yeah, I think that the previous one had male. Yeah, like, like the Rolex, and yeah. it, just, and it, it wears sits, big and awkward, yeah. and it's not that great. It so had sort of a pie dish nicer. effect to it. It was just like a yeah. spin lid on your wrist. It looked bigger than what it should. Oh, be. definitely, yeah. Um, I did notice that uh, one of the brands I can't remember, not Suge, it might have been Suge's actually. They've released an Explorer too, but the bezel on it is really big. It makes the dial look very small. Mm. You'll, you'll see it when you're, you're looking around AliExpress, but that to me is is, is pretty good. No, that's mm. good. All right. Cool. So, now, not all experiences are positive. Oh. oh. And I think I've, um, apart from buying a, um, a sort of good spectrum of various movements, I've also had um, quite a few different experiences. So this one, I'm not, I mean, not too happy about the service. Um, the watch itself, I quite like. So this is a um, uh, look. So the I'll, go, um, I'll just say what I didn't like about it. I ordered the stereo dial, mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, and the moment I opened it up and I saw the branding on the dial, I was like. Ugh. And to be honest, I wouldn't have minded so much if the brand was halfway decent English. Yes. Um, like Harlan or you know, Harlan or, or, or something. It's an, but an actual, actual word. But what is, is it, Sam? What is it? It's uh... uh I struggle to pronounce this. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're not alone. A, it's, a, it's a Horland. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's what, what's your best attempt at that one? Rodland. Yeah, yeah, I go for Rodland. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a Dutch. We all like a Dutch brand. Yeah, put, put a scan on it somewhere. Hoyer, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. so um, I, I saw the brand and I'm like, oh, really? I, I messaged him straight away. And I said, look, if you have a sterile dial, just send a dial, I can put one on here. Um, reply was, yeah, sure, we'll send one out to you when we find one. Oh. I'm still waiting. I'm not oh, not counting okay. on them sending anything to me. Well, um, well, well, sorry, where are you going to get that dial replaced? Well, they will, they will have to send one. They'll send the whole watch, won't they? Was that what they said they were going to send the whole um, watch? I, I asked just for the dial. Oh, did thought, you? Oh, can, right. you, can you do the dial? Can you do that yourself? Let's get, get it to a watchmaker to do it. Why? Good luck. They've charged you more than the watch. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So I, the, the, while we're talking, the SD1970, I think I put it some, next to something that was fairly strong magnet. Magnet, wise. okay. Right. So it needed to be demagnetized. The watchmaker did tell me that it needed to be serviced and a few bits were replaced. Mm. But you know what he charged me to do that? 90 bucks. Oof. So I'm sure it was just magnet, magnetized. The point I'm trying to make is, is um, when I thought it was actually a movement issue, I sort of emailed a few watchmakers and said, hey, look, if I get a watch movement shipped in, we they just laughed at me like 500 bucks, mate, and it will take three, <laughs> three months. Yeah, right. right. No, so you can't really do a great deal. And that's mm. one thing to, to, to factor in is, you know, these are nice watches, but there is an element of when they go wrong, you're probably easier just to chuck it yeah. or try and salvage what you can for spare parts yeah. um, and, and just get another one. Uh, and that, that that doesn't uh, that doesn't really sit well with me because I like to try and extract as much value out of something as possible. Um, but you know they're not throwaway things; they're, they're really nice. Mm. 
but I, I'd love that. I, I don't mind. I don't mind the text on that dial, to be honest. Well, to be honest, it's um, it's small enough, and you can't really tell what the letters are anyway. But when it's not it's what you wanted, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I've gone back onto the the store, and there's been quite a few feedback saying, "I ordered sterile dial. You sent this." Okay. So it's not a one-off mistake. Yeah. They were they sure. were actively making this mistake. I think everyone. there is a bit of a policy sometimes of ship first and ask questions later. Yeah. You know, people people will generally deal with it because it's like, oh well, you know, what are you gonna do? You buy something from China, you're not gonna send it back because you pay for postage. Speaking of, mm -hmm. they offer the free return policy. Or do which they? Which I only just saw. All right, well that's a surprise. So I should have taken that up when it was within the return period. But you know, I like the watch. I wanted the red dial or the burgundy dial. It's a, um, and I think it's a much more faithful reproduction of the original Czech. Um, and what is what is the original? I'm not familiar with the. It's the Czech Air Force. The okay. Okay. it's got the um, it's got the Magitek. So if you can read that. Um, the back. So it's a re-edition of the original pilots from back in the days. Um, Longines did a reissue just very recently, but right. they added crown guards to it. Yep. Which made the case look a bit too bulky in mm -hmm. my opinion, this is more how it looked like originally. Um, so it's a very, sort of it's like a lesser known pilot watch. Okay, it's very nice actually. Yeah, it's really well done. Um, and it runs a, an automatic ST17 movement. Right. So yeah, pretty decent movement. Um, and automatic one, as well? Yeah. Okay. It's a bit more expensive, I think, I think this was 220, 230 right. shipped. It's a burgundy dial. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Did it come in other colorways? Sorry? Did it come in other colorways? Yeah, it's a really nice navy blue, which I quite liked as well. It's okay. a dark green dial. Um, of course, the black. Uh, but yeah, I went for burgundy because I um, I really like the burgundy dial reversal. Mm -hmm. I kind of for yeah. what they're charging for, yeah. so I thought I'll <laughs> go for an alternative. But apart from the, the branding on the dial, I actually really like this watch. Mm. And it's actually on the original strap that it came with. I was going to say, uh, look, I, uh, every and, time you open yeah. up the watch hole, I do go, that's a really nice strap, yeah. but I know it's oh, not the it's stock not the one that came with it. But that is, that's and That's good. the original strap. I mean, it's not it's not branded, mm -hmm. but it's um, the strap is actually really nice as well. Yeah. So I'm very happy with the strap, so I've I mean, kept the watch uh, on the strap. Again, you know, we're looking at the watch, but... The straps on some of these watches, if you wanted one of those, like I know mm. I had a Citizen um, I got from Starbuy, it was in the special, it was like 200 bucks or something. And it should be retailing for 800 or something. It was something mm. like below cost. Um, and the price that that watch was sold at, um, somebody had ordered it, I think on a rubber strap. And Deepak was saying that um, uh, the guy said, oh look, I actually want to get the, the, the bracelet. But the bracelet cost 250. <laughs> More than the cost of the watch. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's again, over double what you'd pay for this entire, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. for the for entire the SD1970. And that sort of puts it in perspective. You know, mm. In some respects, when you start ordering and you go down the rabbit hole of AliExpress watches, it, you, you just sort of get spoiled sometimes. Mm. I mean, again, looking at this where it was 300 and something versus 170 or 180 is typically what I pay for a, a Pagani. I'm like, God, should I spend that much? <laughs> You know, it's, it's <laughs> ludicrous, really. Yeah. But that's really nice, Sam. That's a good one. Mm, um, I, I, like see, I hadn't seen that before, but I will definitely have mm. a look for that myself because that is pretty. And yeah, I could I could cope with Rudeland on the <laughs> dial. <laughs> some I, of the names, you know. I've, just, I've made videos <laughs> about some of the names. There's some stuff that I just won't touch, and there's some stuff that is just comedically bad. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They make beautiful watches, but you know, em employ somebody to do a little bit of marketing for you and you'll sell more of your beautiful watches. But. And I'm just surprised at how proud they are of this weird spelling of whatever this term is. Yeah, because who it's knows? All over I mean, their boxes, there. Yeah, I guess yeah. This, this doesn't mean much to us. It's probably, maybe it means somebody, something to somebody who's German speaking, but. Um. All right, so thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share. Uh, subscribe, that's the important one. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah.